As you heard, we are located in the Pegwell Box in Christ Church in Barbados. Right now, we are streaming live on YouTube. Uh, so people are hearing us elsewhere. And if you want to phone somebody right now, WhatsApp somebody, tell them that we're online. Pegwell Community Church of Barbados. That's all. And they will hear what we are going to be talking about tonight. Amen. Look, so many things are happening. People are dying. People are getting sick. We can't afford to be lackadaisical. We've got to rise up, do what the Lord said, and we're going to be surprised to see what's going to happen. Tonight, I want you to, to observe, get this message tonight, really pay close attention. I'm talking a little bit about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's what I want to talk to you about tonight. Out of the abundance of the heart. You know, like I said, God is expecting us to do great things for him. He's expecting us to fill our hearts with his word and then go speak his word. I'm not going to be complicated tonight. I'm going to speak in a simple way that everybody can understand because I want you to leave here and go and put in practice that which the Lord is saying to us. So let us start reading Luke chapter 6, verse 45. I just wanted the last part of the verse, but let's look at the entire verse. Look at this. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. You can't swear and say, wait, I didn't know that was in me. No, it ain't there. The Lord said you bring forth what is in your heart. So a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, is going to bring forth that which is good. But an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. So what comes out of your heart? What, what is it that comes out of your heart? Something good or something evil? We're going to get that in a minute. For of the abundance of the heart, what is in your heart, filling your heart? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so I want to tell you tonight that we're going to have to speak the word of God over some things which we're going to be praying about in a few minutes. I have about six things that we want to pray about tonight. We want to go deeper we don't want to remain on the periphery. We want to go deeper. And you're in a good place to go deeper. You'll get the word here. It's going to take you deeper. Amen? Uh, in, in, in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16, it tells us that you should let the word of God dwell in you richly. There should not be a scarcity of the word in your life. You come to a church where you hear the word. And then, it, then it's your obligation to go home, pick up your Bible, and read the word because you're going to find that the word is so important. The word is so powerful. By the word of God were the heavens made. God said, let there be. And he saw. And we're going to look at some other things that he said tonight. The word is really important. How is a young man going to cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of God. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word of God is food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So number one, if you're writing, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You should have a whole bundle of scripture concerning healing, prosperity, spiritual debt, walk in the holiness, righteousness. If you were going to get a degree at the end of this teaching, you would make great effort to, to get these things in your heart. You'll make great effort to get to know them. But listen, brethren, what you're going to get as a result of this word is more than a degree, as we're going to see later. So number one, the Lord said that we should let the word of God dwell in our hearts. And I'm going to show you now that we have to speak the word. But before we, have to, before we speak the word, let's look at James chapter 3 and verse 11. A verse that's going to tell you, that you could never, I wish this were so, you could never go to your tap at home in the kitchen and you turn it on and you're going to find water and coke coming out at the same time. I would love that. How many of you would love that? I would love that. So the Lord is talking about your lips. So we're going to talk some about the lips before we talk about speaking words that are going to be productive. Before we talk about speaking words that are going to be productive, we're going to look at some things that are blessing blockers. These block the blessing. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter water? 
So, so if we want to speak the word of God over sickness and disease, the same, the same mouth is going to bring forth that word, the same mouth we use in these areas. Give me, let me give you seven areas here. That we use our lips, we have to do something about it. These are all blessing blockers. You're not going to have these that I'm talking to you about and the word of God all flowing through the same mouth. And perhaps that's one reason why we're not prospering like we should. That's one reason why we're not seeing deliverances and healings and miracles as we should. A fountain cannot give sweet water and bitter water at the same place. Similarly, your lips, your lips cannot bring forth that which is pleasing to God. And at the same time, look, look at this. Some things we have to get rid of. I have number one is lying. Lying. There are lots of liars around the place today. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8 said that all liars, it could be a white lie or a black lie. It could be a big lie or a small lie. It could be an accidental lie or an intentional lie. All liars. I mean, if the Lord had said liars going to heaven, that'd be bad. But he made sure that he qualified it. He said all liars. Look at this. The fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the whoremongers, the sorcerers, the idolaters, and all liars. Look at, the, look, look at the list you are in if you are a liar. Look at the list you are in with, with the abominable and the murders and the whoremongers. So we're going to get rid of lying because we want to speak a powerful word. These things are blessing blockers. The other one I have here is gossip. Gossip. You can't be a gossip monger. A chronic gossip monger. Not even gossiping once or twice. No, no. You can't be a chronic gossip monger and expect you're going to have the word of God flow out of your life. So we got to get rid of that. The next one is murmuring. You can put that up in, the, in, in that's probably something in Romans. The Bible said that we should not be murmurers. The word that translates murmurers is the same word that translates whisperers. You know the people who are always whispering? <laughs> You know why they have to do it? Because they know they're wrong. Why they can't say open? The, the policy is if you can't say something, no, if you can't say something in front of a person, don't say it behind their back. It is unfortunate that sometimes I, because I don't want to talk to some people, sometimes I, I, I say things in the hearing of other people. I know, they, I know they, 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 they're just listening, but I know once they hear, the message is gone. You can't be like that. If I want to tell certain people certain things, I would pretend that I see you behind there and I will talk because I know that you gossip so much that before church is finished, you're going to go back and say, the pastor says this, the pastor says that. These are blasts and blockers. So I said lying, gossip, murmuring, put that scripture here, what God says, that we should do all things without murmurings and disputing. The word disputing is the old English word which means arguments. You just go say, say good morning to some people to begin to argue. What's a good about them? And, and the, 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 the Lord said, you know, I was thinking today of the scripture that says, many are those who will seek to enter into the kingdom, but will not enter. So there are those who will start out. They will have good intentions, come to church and preach and do everything, but they're still not going to enter. The Lord said they have good intentions. They're those who will seek to enter. Are you understand what I'm saying? They're not out there in the world living bad and things like that. They're in the church clapping and singing and teaching Sunday school and everything. They're seeking to enter. Look, it's right there. Strive. You've got to strive to enter at the straight gate for many, not a few. Many, I say, will seek to enter. They're trying to, they start out, they're making some effort. But because they wouldn't make any effort to clean up like we're saying here now, because they're, because they're guilty of what we had in this morning's service. This morning's message was, Israel, because there was no king, is every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And if you continue to do that which is right in your own eyes, you're going to strive to enter in. And when you stand before God, you're going to say, God, well, I taught Sunday school, I went to the Peg Community Church 25 years and all that. And the Lord will say, depart from me, I never knew you. So you've got to be careful. Look at this one more time. For I say unto you that many will seek. They come to prayer meeting. They're singing the choir. But they're not making this fine tuning like I'm talking about. They're still gossiping and murmuring and lying. While under the pretense that they're serving God. They will seek to enter. That's such a sad verse. 
but they're not going to make it. So before we can speak forth the word of God that I'm going to tell you about tonight, there's some things that we got to do first. Can we all decide tonight that we're going to work on this? And you work on yours, I work on mine. We start off with lying because our liar is going to hell. We talk about gossiping. Gossiping. Uh, the Bible put it another way. Paul said that there were those who were prating, P-R-A-T-I-N-G, against him with malicious words. In other words, they were gossiping about, about Paul and his entourage. Uh, look at right there. Paul said, when I come, when I come to this church, I, I'm going to, not, not Paul, John. John said, I, I, I'm going to remember what they did because they were prating against us with malicious words. Do you use malicious words? It's a blessing blocker. I'm going to ask you tonight to speak to certain things. But if you're, if you're guilty of this malicious words right there, it's going to be a blessing blocker. So we have lying, we have gossip, we have murmuring, we have, we have malicious words. Malicious words come from the word malice. Your ill will against somebody. And you hate the person so much that you even tell lies on them. Malicious words. Then you go to debates. There's another scripture which talks about debates. Debates is being argumentative. You're debating all the time. You're arguing. There's some people that, that you know that can get a lot of help, but they don't let you get in the words in between. They're always ready to argue. Everything is an argument. Therefore, uh, debates. And before we get to, after we get to debates, uh, we go to get another word which says, which says backbitings. Backbitings is another word, another use of the word of your lips. Backbitings and whisperings. For I fear, Paul said to the Corinthians, lest when I come to your church, I find it not as it should be. When I come, I find people there who are into debates in the church, you know, always arguing, envies, wrath, another word for violence, strife. Look, backbitings right there. Right in the church, backbitings. Look, whisperings right there. This is what was happening in the Corinthian church. Brethren, let's all deal with these things because I believe next year the Lord is going to pack out this church. And I believe God is going to be dependent on all of us to do a whole lot of stuff. Other than what we are doing now. Lots of, lots of, all, lots of you are going to be getting it from where you are and actually doing some stuff. So we got to get these things right. So let me tell you where I am so far. I'm saying... That we are talking tonight about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay? The mouth needs to speak some powerful words that God is going to give us. But if we are speaking these things, huh? backbitings, whispering, talking behind somebody's back, murmuring, uh, debates, gossip, and lying, and things like that, those are sins of the mouth. Sins of the mouth. And we got to get rid of of those. So number one, we got to clean up our mouth. We got to clean up our mouth. You know, I was longing to tell you who in our church need to clean up their mouth. I was longing to tell you who's the worst person we have in this church. Should I tell you tonight? A pastor did that one time and he, he tell him for, for two weeks, I am going to tell you who is the worst member of this church. And the day that he announced he was going to say it, some people actually brought in their lawyers. Some rich people brought in their lawyers and said, if you call my name, I can sue him. So he got up and he asked the people to turn to the book of James. And there you will find who's the worst member in the church. The Bible said the tongue is a wicked member. You, you see it? We can bring it up. That's the, that's the most wicked person that we have in church, the tongue. The tongue. Oh, you thought I was going to call your name? Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Could you bring that up in the book of James? Uh, I want to see that the tongue is a little member and it's real, real, real wicked. So we're asking you to deal with the tongue at this stage. Right at this stage, deal with the tongue. Some people just can't stop talking. The Bible said in the multitude of words, meaning the more you talk, you talk your way into sin. Do you know the scripture says that? We can bring that up also. Listen, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things, etc., etc. I think it's verse 4 it says, is a little member uh, uh, and is about as wicked. But let us talk about the fact that the Lord said that some of you talk too much all day, all night. And says where you should just say yes. 
you got to go and give a whole book. The Lord says in the multitude of words, in the multitude of words, there lacketh not sin. The more you talk, the more you get into sin. The Bible also says that even a fool, when he keeps his mouth shut, is considered wise. A fool walks through the front door right now, can't even spell his name, homeless, whatever, but he has on a jacket. You will look at him and say, he looks like a man with a PhD. But the man is a fool. It's only when he opens his mouth that you realize that he's retarded. But if he will keep his mouth shut all during the service, you will have such a good impression of him. There's some people who just wouldn't stop talking. And showing it from the word of God, listen to this, in the multitude of words, there want if not sin. You are going to sin if you keep talking all the time. Have you had any of those persons that wouldn't stop talking? Let me push on quickly. If we're going to speak the word of God, we have to first clean up our lips, our tongue, our mouth. Look in the Bible for all scriptures that talk about lips, the tongue, and the mouth. Yeah? And you will see where God is saying that the tongue is an unruly member and causes a whole lot of trouble. That, that, that is why my job is to, is to look around here and see who you associate with, who is speaking into your life, if they're qualified to speak into your life. Because if those lips, those lying, whispering lips speak into your life the wrong thing, it could mean that you could end up in hell. Ending up in hell is not an alternative, brethren. To end up in hell is to spell all eternity in fire and brimstone. We do not want to go to hell. Be careful with the use of your mouth and be careful with those persons who use their mouths to speak into your life. Because they always come and say, God says, you and God follow. God can't talk to you. Anybody here, you, you and God is falling out. Wait, God always got to send a message to you by somebody. You don't pray. You don't fast. You don't seek God for yourself. Why God always has to send a message to you by somebody? It's because you're not listening. Well, from tonight on, you're going to listen. Amen? You're going to use your mouth to bring deliverance. Romans 10 and 10. You're going to use the mouth, speak the word of God to bring deliverance. Romans 10 and 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth... Sometimes you ask people to open their mouth and speak, and you don't understand why we say that. The promises of God are voice activated. You can't just think about them and get them come to pass. You got to open your mouth. Look, it's right there. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. This word confession does not mean confession of sin. The word confess means to agree with God. So you confess by his stripes I'm a heal. You get up in the morning, you make a confession. That's why we've been making confessions of the word in here quite recently. You wake up and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's a confession. Confession doesn't mean you go to the Roman Catholic priest, you tell him all your sins. That's not what it means here. So with the mouth, with your mouth, you confess. I'm going to ask you to do that in a few minutes. You open your mouth and you confess that with his stripes you're healed. You confess God is my refuge and strength. You don't have to see it. You just believe God by faith. We've got to get past living in the five senses. We've got to get past that, and we've got to go to the sixth sense, which is faith. In faith, when it comes to faith, you don't see the answer. The Bible said, faith that is seen is not faith. So you don't have to, you don't have, to have faith for your check at the end of the month, because you know if you work, the check is coming. You don't have to have faith for that. But faith is when you don't have two nickels to rub together and you confess, my rent is going to be paid by the end of the month. God will supply all my need according to his riches. But lying and gossip and murmuring and things like that is going to weaken that confession. And whereas you want to confess that and believe God, the devil is going to throw in your face all your murmurings and lying and deceit and things like that. So your confession is weakened. We confess Isaiah 53, 6, by his stripes we are healed. We confess Isaiah 54, 15. I want you to get this one. Isaiah 54, 15 or 17, I don't remember. But where's Isaiah 54, 17? This is the one that says, and you got to believe this, because all sorts of things are being thrown at you, brethren. The end is upon us. The devil is working overtime. 
That's why you always have a cold or a belly ache or you don't have bus fare or the shoe heel fall off or something because the devil is really, really busy. But you got to get it with the devil as busy as is. And I don't think in, in, in any of your lives the devil could be as busy as he is in mine. Because the Bible said if you strike the shepherd, the sheep will fall. The sheep will scatter. So you will understand how much devils I have coming at me. Huh? But this, is, this has always been my help. Look at it. You got to say this even if it, don't look slick, if it doesn't look like that. You have to say this even if it doesn't look like that. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Yes, the weapon is going to be formed. The devil has his cohorts. The devil has his people, some planted in your marriage, some planted in your family, some planted in the house where you live. The devil has people that are working 24-7. No weapon. So the weapon is going to be formed. The weapon of sickness, the weapon of disease, the weapon of failure, the weapon of closed doors. But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. You need to get up in the morning and say that. No weapon. And say it in words. Not only think about it, but words. Brother, you understand what I'm saying? You are going to grow in the Lord if you follow these instructions. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. But it continues, you know. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, there's some people who come to church here for a number of years, and they wonder how come I still here when their tongue have been in judgment against me for so long. Your tongue have been in judgment against me for so long. And I still hear, you know why? Look, it's right there. Every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, I, not God, I shall condemn. You know when you condemn a house, when the government condemns a house, what happens to that house? It is, it is something begins with a W. It, it's worthless. So the government condemns it, next thing they tear it down. Any judgment that you bring against me, I condemn as worthless. It isn't even worth my time. It doesn't worth my giving it the day. And all these years, you use your tongue against the pastor and nothing happened. What do you think? Because of this verse. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn it. And look at this. This is the heritage of the servants of God. I'm a servant of God, and I'm entitled to that. That's a heritage that's left for me by Jesus. So these are things that we confess. You speak the word, not what the doctors say. You're not denying what the doctors say, but you speak what God says. Whose report are you going to believe? The Lord, was our sister not supposed to die three, in three days? How many weeks this is now? I heard from her today. She's in the hospital, but she's doing fairly well. And we're going to be praying for her again tonight, this year. All right? You got to speak the word in faith. Listen to, to Matthew 17, 20. Here the Lord is going to say that if you speak to mountains, a mountain is something that's standing in your way. A mountain is something that you can't just go through. A mountain is something that's insurmountable. You know, this high mountain, how are you, how you going how you gonna to advance? How are you going to progress with a mountain in your way? Look, the Lord gives us the answer. Matthew 17, 20. Uh, the Lord says, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, all right, you will say, not think, you will say to the mountains in your life, you will say to the mountains in your life, Mountains remove from here to there. And look, and it shall obey, and nothing shall be impossible to you. So you open your mouth, free of lying, and gossip, and slander, and backbiting, and murmuring. All that's gone. You open your mouth, you begin to speak the word to your situation. You tell your body, no growth in my body will prosper. Anything in my body that God did not put in Adam's body, I curse it in the name of Jesus. You think the Lord put cancer in Adam's body? Do you think the Lord put any tumors and any bumps in, any, in Adam's body? Do you think the Lord had, that Adam's body had excess cholesterol blocking his, his veins and arteries? Come on, talk to me, somebody. I don't know if you would pray about that. If there's something growing that tell you you have cancer, you pray like this. I cut off every supply to any cancer or tumor that's growing in my body. Because the cancer and the tumor got to be fed by something. 
Talk to me. We ain't gone to know where it is. We just gone to know it's fed by something. We cut off the supply in the name of Jesus and command it to dry up and pass out of your body. That's the authority that you have when you're not into gossip and backbiting and rebellion. As a matter of fact, Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 19 says, the only way you're going to eat the good of the land that I'm talking about is if you be willing and obedient. But if you're rebellious, let, let's read it. If you be willing and, you have to have both. Some people are willing, but they're not obedient. Others are obedient, but they're just doing it, they're really willing. The Lord said, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. Those cancers will disappear. If we do the first part of this message, get the fountain clean because the fountain cannot give water and moby at the same time. So we get the fountain clean, get the lips clean. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment will condemn. If we refuse though to be willing and obedient, and if we refuse and rebel, we should be devoured of the sword or devoured by the cancer or devoured by kidney failure. Anybody understand what I'm saying? I have, a guy, I have a guy who comes here who quite recently had one of his toes taken off. And now yesterday and today, the doctors are telling him, we have to take off the foot just below the knee because of infection and things like that. By the way, when we tell you how to live to serve God as a pastor, you get vexed. How do you think the doctor told him that? Well, um, <laughs> I think that, you, um, that your foot is bad. <laughs> you think he did that? He's telling him something that will save his life. You have people in the church that you try to tell them things that will save their life and they get vexed. Don't speak to you for weeks, pass by you like they don't know you. But when the doctor says something like that, they don't behave like that. You understand what I'm saying? But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured of the sword. We have got to pray and speak the word of faith against mountains. We got to speak against sycamine trees because the Lord said if you have a sycamine tree in your way and you speak to that tree and tell it to dry up, it will dry up. I ain't saying it might, it will, you know. Look at Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24. And see what the Lord says. See that there's no ifs, ands, or buts in there. And then I'm going to stop talking in a few minutes. Mark chapter 11, 23. Look at what the Lord says. For verily I, Jesus, who cannot lie, say this. That whosoever shall say to this mountain, whatever that mountain is in your life, if your lips are clean, if you're not practicing those things that I said just now, the Bible said, who's going to ascend to the hill of the Lord? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, and out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. So if you don't have a, a pure heart, you're going to speak things that you should not speak. Huh? But if you shall say to the mountain, be thou removed, mountain move, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, you will have whatsoever you say. What about that we don't understand? You will have whatsoever you say. So watch your mouth and start confessing. Start confessing the word of God. And expect miracles to happen. Expect miracles. Because you were here this morning, I'm going to cut short this message and leave the balance until Tuesday night. On Tuesday night when we come, we are coming to pray. I don't mean a little five, ten minutes prayer. We are coming to spend some quality time in prayer. Because I'm sensing in my spirit that this church needs some prayer right now. Um, some of us are getting a little bit cold. Some of us are getting a little bit miserable. All sorts of things are happening. We need prayer. And the Lord told us last week that men are always to pray and what? And not to faint. He also told us that prayer without ceasing. There are attacks, some subtle attacks coming from this church. I mean, coming against this church, even in the media. Well, so we need to pray. We're not going to fail. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. We wish that some people who are doing this would know that that's what the Lord said. And we also got, people, got to get people to understand that when the Lord calls somebody to ministry, the Lord said the gifts and calling of God are what? Without repentance. God doesn't change his mind when he calls somebody to ministry. So those of you who have been praying and need another pastor, you're wasting time. Because when God calls, and you believe me, there are one or two persons doing that. Because they want to have their own way. 
they want to do like we had this morning. The children of Israel had no king, so every man did that which was right in his own eyes. But the things which were right in his own eyes were very, very wrong in the eyes of the Lord. And Israel paid dearly because every man did that which was right in his own eyes. We're not going to do that here. And we wish those persons who are doing that would stop. So this is what we're going to be praying about for 10 minutes. We have a lot of time. We have about half an hour, but let's pray for 10 minutes. Tonight, we want to pray and go a little bit further than the, than the average church would do. We want to talk tonight about your brain function. We're having a lot of problems with brain function. As a matter of fact, we want to pray against Alzheimer's. We want to pray against dementia. And those of you who live in a house with persons over 70, you need to open your eyes and see what's happening. Watch them put the matches in the freezer. Watch them move everything from where it ought to be and don't know where to put it. Those are persons that you have to take away the bank card from them sooner or later. Because unless God intervenes, it's going to get worse. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Those are the people that walk away from home and you don't know where they're gone. And they're leaving, they don't, they don't even tell you where they're gone. So if they lost, you can't even tell the police where they're gone because you don't know. Sometimes they wait till you leave home and they leave after you. So you can't even tell the police what clothes they got on. But we're going to pray against that brain function. Look, the church, the, the, the hospital is populated with, 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 with beds that ought to be for the unsafe. God told us what we can do so that we don't go in those beds in the hospital. Look at it. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Those hospital beds, I'm not saying that we would never go, but those hospital beds are not for us. We are different. God has told us what we should do. Look at this. Is any sick among you? What do we do? Go occupy a hospital bed? I'm not saying that it never happens. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But the Lord said, let them call. This is what God has ordained for the church. Let them call for the elders of the church. And let the elders of the church pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And what will happen? Look at the next verse. The prayer of faith shall deliver the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. That's how the church should operate. Call for the elders of the church. So we want to pray about brain function. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of sickness going around. Uh, people are committing suicide. The attempted suicide has skyrocketed. Somebody pray about that tonight. Somebody pray about that tonight. We also want to pray about stroke. There's so many people having stroke. Did you hear the doctor talk about it quite recently? Stroke. Stroke could be very, very dangerous. It could be deadly, but if you survive a stroke, you could be severely handicapped or incapacitated, whatever word you want to use. A stroke is certainly not something nice to have. But the Lord said we could pray about it. And we could pray about it even before it happens. Because sometimes you don't have any indication that it's happening. So remember all these things that I'm telling you. We're praying against stroke tonight. We are praying for mental health. Even some Christians are having difficulty with mental health. They're not in the mental hospital and that's all. But you can see that they're having difficulties so we're going to pray about mental health. Like I said, we're going to pray about suicide, attempted suicide. Then there are those who are cutting. Then there are those who are depressed and discouraged and those who are oppressed. I want everybody to remember these words because I want to call them before the Lord. Tonight we're going to say, Lord, we come against this in the name of Jesus. That's what the church is supposed to do. We are supposed to be helping the doctors or the doctors helping us wanted to do. But we are, God has given us as a church the power. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the works of the devil. And sickness is the work of the devil. Disease is the work of the devil. And the Lord said, I've given the church power over that. I've given the church power over that. So we got to get out of the rut of living in sin and all those, those diseases of the mouth that we talk about, gossiping and lying and all that sort of stuff. We need to get rid of that so that the Lord can use us and we can see some more, we can see some more Christians having a longer life. Stroke not coming. If it does, we ought to be able to go and attack it. We want to pray about heart. They tell me that heart, the heart issues is the second highest cause of death in Barbados. Heart issues. Every time you look around, somebody has a problem with their heart. 
had a funeral here this uh, last week. The lady, lady told me, mother of the deceased told me that she has to look for $82,000 to put a shunt in her heart. $82,000. No, we don't got to do that. We just come before the Lord seriously. We have oil here. We anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord and believe God. And we could see that heart healed in the name of Jesus. I was listening to Andrew Womack today. He was playing some, some healing tapes about people who actually got healed right in the ministry. And one lady there who had lupus, she had bad heart. Everything was going wrong with her, kidney failure and all that. And one day, nine years ago, as she was watching one of his tapes and listening to the word of God, like I'm preaching to you, God just healed her, completely healed now, after being sick like that, about seven or eight years, they have some persons that I know now that are bedridden. They're on bed, can't move. They've been on bed for seven, eight, nine years. God can raise them up. Now, God raised up a man that was there for 38 years. Talk to me, somebody. If God raised a man that was by the pool for 38 years, somebody that, that is sick for seven or eight years is not too hard for him. You have anybody like that? We're going to be praying. We're going vigorously. We're not going to the next year. We're starting now. We're going vigorously against all these diseases. We're talking about kidney function or kidney malfunction, how you choose to look at it. A lot of people are having problems. And they're telling me it costs so much money per year for the hospital just to keep one person on dialysis. Maybe $200,000 to keep one person on dialysis. And you understand there are probably 40 or more that are down there. Amen. But for the church, we have the answer. The Lord didn't tell us that we got to go down to the Dallas department. The Lord said that we should pray and speak to the mountains, speak to cancer, speak to kidneys. And if we are living right and doing the right things, we are going to see the answer. Anybody understand that's what I'm talking to you about tonight? So we speak the word. That's why God let the word of God dwell in your heart richly. These sicknesses and diseases, we can handle them. Heart function. Pray about diabetes and her family. Diabetes got a big, big family. If you're a diabetic, almost every other part of your body is affected. Your eyes, your brain, your nerves, your kidneys, almost every other part. Your sexual organs, everything. So I usually call it diabetes and her family. And when they pray against it, I curse the whole family. You better don't let me. <laughs> I curse the whole family. All of them, they, all of them. You have no part in my body. You got to tell it like that. You have no part in my body. But if you're not right, you're going to be weak in your prayer. You're going to be weak in your prayer because the devil, is, the devil is sure to bring it up. You better shut him up. What nonsense are you talking? Devil can't cast out devil. You can try to cast me out and you're on my side already. You understand? And kidney function. And also, we want to pray tonight about diet. You know diet? I didn't say diet, Coke. I said diet. Uh, all of us maybe need to change our diet. God will heal us, but it is, you know, if for God to heal us, you got to get sick. Answer me. For God to heal you, you got to get sick. But we don't want to get sick in the first place because 1 John 1 and 9, no, I don't take the scripture, but it tells us that God, God said, I wish above all things that you would prosper and that you would be in health or healthy as your soul prospers. So God wants us to be healthy, not to get sick and get healed. God doesn't want us to get sick and then get healed. God wants us to remain healthy. And so perhaps we can help him out by doing something about our diet. And when you go home, read Daniel chapter 1 and see whereas Daniel and, and the other two, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were, uh, they were assigned a certain amount of meat uh, per day. They said to themselves, we are not going to defile ourselves with the king's meat. And they inquired and asked somebody, let us eat vegetables. Your text will probably say a pulse. Let us eat vegetables for 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, if we don't look better than those that are eating the meat, then we will eat the meat. And in only 10 days of eating vegetables, the Bible said that they were fairer. They were fairer than all those who ate all that pork and, and beef. And now they're telling you that you have, more, you have more cholesterol in chicken than you have in beef. All oh, kinds of stuff. I was even listening to ready today. So this is what we're going to be praying right now. We're going to put a song in the background. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. We're going to be praying about brain function, especially if we have older person. Although Alzheimer's is presenting itself earlier these days, you can find people with 40, in the 40s that are showing signs of, of Alzheimer's and dementia. We're going to pray about that. Somebody remember that. Somebody on that side remember that. 
We're going to be praying about stroke. Somebody on this side here, remember that. Stroke. We're going to be praying about other mental health issues. Somebody in this section here, remember that. Mental health issues. We're going to be praying about uh, the, the suicide attempts. Uh, some people are actually going through with it, but across America, so many people, it is skyrocketed. We want to pray about kidney function, and we're going to pray that God will give us the wisdom that we will change our diets. It is not going to taste good. It's going to taste awful, but it works. We cannot afford to have our arteries blocked. Because the next thing you know, you have to get triple bypass surgery and all kind of stuff, and it costs a lot of money. So you all guys are ready to pray? Before we, read, you, we pray, let's all stand. I want to... The simplicity of the gospel.